Now, news this weekend that hackers presumed to be China have broken into the New South Wales Parliament computer system and stolen the private details of politicians. Now, this security breach occurred two years ago, but has only just been uncovered as part of a recent audit that took place after hacking was uncovered at the federal level. The fact that the New South Wales Parliament was targeted would have remained secret had the Prime Minister Scott Morrison not chosen to reveal it recently. Uh, New South Wales opposition leader Jody McKay joins me now to discuss this. How concerned are you about this breach of the New South Wales Parliament? Uh, well, obviously, I have to say I was quite shocked when I uh, read about it uh, in the newspaper. Um, it's the first uh, thing that we'd, we'd actually been told. We hadn't been told about it. Um, we've had our leader of uh, opposition business in the upper house who's been in touch with a clerk uh, over the weekend. We hope to find out more during the week. But obviously, it is of significant concern because uh, there's a lot of information that uh, passes through uh, an MP's office uh, and obviously a minister's office and a shadow minister's office. Some MPs are now saying that they're so concerned about speaking on the phone or using email to discuss particularly sensitive matters that they're going to have to go back to pen and paper, such as the extent of the threat of hacking now from China uh, and other cyber activity. Are you taking extra precautions? Uh, well, I will say that's the first time I've heard that. I mean, obviously, um, <clears throat> what has come out this weekend is the first time I've actually heard that the computer system has been compromised. Um, generally, the uh, Parliament IT uh, department does a terrific job, and I, I would have hoped that we would have been informed of this before it was published. Uh, but, you know, there is so much that happens online, and I think it would be near impossible to be able to go back to pen and paper. But I do think that, uh, you know, we as MPs, whether it's at a state or a federal level, uh, need to be confident that the system we're using uh, is uh, safe and secure. And I think our constituents want that because you have to remember that we're ha handling their data as well uh, on, on a daily basis. If they're coming into our electorate office, uh, you know, their details are kept on our computer system as well. I think that's quite extraordinary that the parliament uh, hasn't told you or notified you given that any number of your MPs might have had their data breached and this actually took, took place a couple of years ago. But yeah, I'm quite surprised as well, I have to say. Now, onto another matter. The ASIO and the AFP raided the home and office of Labor MP Shaket Mosselman uh, and his staff member. Do you accept a level of responsibility that this happened under your watch? And are you going to do anything differently from here on end to ensure that other Labor MPs uh, may not be compromised in a similar way? Well, uh, can I say that I've suspended uh, Shaket from the party and uh, he suspended himself from the parliament. If he hadn't have done that, uh, I would have done that. Um, the Legislative Council, of which uh, he is a member of that House, is not sitting next week. Uh, but he has made that decision to suspend himself, which is the right decision. Um, I can't comment on the investigation. In that first uh, day or so, I was briefed by ASIO and the Australian Federal Police, but I, uh, I have not uh, had any contact with them since. Uh, my office did speak to them this week seeking to get an update on where this is uh, where this is headed and what was the response uh, well I, I hope to uh, be able to have more information next week but obviously it's an investigation that uh, that is ongoing and uh, the Australian Federal Police and ASIO need to be able to do their job I mean this is very significant it's it's a security issue uh, of uh, the highest order which is why these two agencies are involved uh, and uh, I've done everything I can as leader of the Labor Party to take action uh, that is commensurate with that now, look, obviously no charges have been laid in this case and it's an ongoing investigation. Uh, but, but what was your reaction to learn that a foreign agent, a spy, may have infiltrated the office of one of your MPs? Well, I was, uh, I was called uh, early in the morning to say that there were um, uh, search warrants that were being executed on the parliament and on his home. Uh, that was the first that I knew about that. And I just want to say thank you to ASIO and the Australian Federal Police because when this happens, uh, has happened in the past, it's been very little information that has been shared. But they did do the right thing and let me know. Uh, but I was, uh, I was shocked, like everybody else, that that was, uh, that was occurring. But, you know, if this investigation um, uh, comes to fruition, and, uh, and I need to take further action than I will. I mean, this is a serious investigation, Shari, as you rightly point out. It involves the two most significant agencies in the country. Look, it is. And, you know, we know now that there has been a section of the Labor Party that has had a serious issue when it comes to Chinese influence. You're now a Labor leader. You weren't Labor leader before. What are you doing now to ensure that no other MPs or staff may be subject uh, to foreign interference? 
Well, um, it, can I say that it hasn't been proven that he's been um, subjected to foreign interference? I think we should put that um, first and foremost, that that hasn't been proven as yet. But all MPs have a standard of behaviour that they have to uh, be able to comply with. That's my expectation. Um, I took uh, very swift action uh, within an hour of finding out that this was underway, and I won't hesitate to do that again. Um, but I do have confidence in the MPs that, but there's, uh, there's that are no Labor other, MPs. There's no other investigation, internal investigation going on uh, to check the background of any other staff or MPs? Uh, no, can I say to you that um, I have full confidence that the two most significant federal agencies in the country are actually looking at what's going on. Yeah. Just before we move on to another topic, there's a growing group who are now trying to save Shaket Musselman. They claim that uh, this has got nothing to do with Chinese influence or ASIO and that he's been the subject of racist media attacks. There's a, a petition or a couple of petitions in the Islamic community. Um, sources tell me that they're concerned that you are, and I quote, weakening. Are you, are you weakening? Are you considering allowing Shaket to rejoin Labor and rejoin the parliament? Well, look, I, I reject that. I've taken uh, every uh, step possible. Uh, he's been suspended from the party. He's been uh, suspended from the parliament. Uh, he's done that himself. And if he didn't, I would have done that. But, you know, it may be that I need to go further. I just don't know. This investigation needs to run its course. And I'm not going to interfere with that. Um, I, I want to see where this ends. Uh, and a decision on what happens with uh, Mr Mosselman will be made once that investigation reaches its conclusion. Yeah. Look, moving on to the coronavirus, I understand that you're going to call tomorrow for the government to follow Victoria's lead, uh, in, not, not generally speaking, of course, but uh, to offer paid pandemic leave to workers who are in self-isolation to make sure that they stay home uh, and not go to work when they're sick because we've seen that so many people mm. in Victoria have been doing that. How would this work? Well, uh, what we're asking for is a hardship payment. We know that many people are in uh, insecure work. Uh, and what is different from uh, this wave uh, to the last wave that we had is that it's not just about being tested, it's actually being isolated and then uh, staying... Uh, sorry, being tested and then isolating for 14 days, which is the different advice that came out during the Crossroads Hotel cluster. Uh, and we believe that we shouldn't wait until we're in a situation like Victoria uh, to be able to encourage people to get tested and to isolate. Um, if uh, those, uh, those um, uh, people who are at risk are in casualised work or uh, certainly uh, insecure work, then they need to make sure that um, they've got a payment to be able to pay their mortgage or uh, to be able to buy food. That shouldn't prevent them from doing the right thing. Look, the Premier has warned, and the New South Wales Premier has warned everyone to prepare for further restrictions if... Um, the outbreak in New South Wales worsens. Do you expect it might go the direction of Victoria? And do you think her approach and, and Victorian uh, Premier Daniel Andrews' approach of going in and out of lockdowns is the right way to go? And how is this sustainable for the next year or so? Yeah, I think that's a really good question. And um, the Premier has said, and I support this, that we are on a knife edge and thereby, if the grace of God go us. Uh, we obviously had our issues with the Ruby Princess and the Newmarch uh, Hostel or aged care facility. Uh, so this could be very well uh, us in this same situation in coming weeks. Um, I, I think it's really important to understand that there's a fine balance between uh, giving the appropriate health response and the restrictions and trying to keep people in a job. One of the things that we've been pushing for is for masks to be worn on public transport so that, you know, we're doing everything we can. I mean, Andrew Constance has said that people shouldn't use public transport, particularly during the peak. Uh, my view of that is that people need to be able to get to their job if they're fortunate to have a job right now, and we should be doing what we can to make sure that that happens. Uh, I don't see why the government is resisting the wearing of masks on public transport. I think that that makes sense, and it also gets us used to a culture of wearing masks. And, of course, we've seen that as the, uh, the uh, antidote, if you like, to the stage for lockdown in Victoria. Uh, it's just one of the many things I think that the government could be doing right now.